Welcome back to God's Business, where I interview the top Christian influencers, entrepreneurs, and business owners on how you can create not just a good business, but God's business, where He is the multiplier of your success. I have a great friend of mine here today, actually in his studio, but it looks a little bit different. Phenomenal setup, and I've just seen him rise up over the last six, seven years to going from a few hundred thousand subscribers to millions of subscribers, creating an info product business that has absolutely blown it up, and also doing it as a guy that has multiplied inside of his faith. We're actually in a mastermind here together as well with a bunch of epic Christians. And this guy lives a life that's submitted to God as well as multiplying in business. So please welcome Mr. Sean Candle to the YouTube channel. Grateful to be here, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's, I, I, it's interesting. I've never had a hard time remembering your name, but for anyone, it's like, you're just meant to go into YouTube because it rhymes with YouTube channel. It does feel a little bit like destiny, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Uh, I think it's interesting how you chose the path of even YouTube in the first place. Would have been maybe a contractor if I didn't randomly go to an internet marketing event. Yeah. Do you think that it was desire or was it an accidental? You showed up, you saw someone on YouTube and you're like, huh, I think I should probably do that. Like, do you think if you were introduced to something else, you would have gone a completely different path? Yeah, actually, uh, I don't think I chose video. Video chose me. Um, I just started volunteering at my local church in 2003. And the youth pastor handed me a video camera and Adobe Premiere video editing software and said, hey, start making videos. And they were, of course, terrible. People are scared to get on camera, but it's like your first videos are your worst videos. So you got to just start. And this was before you could even upload them on the Internet. So I kind of wish I could see them because they're so bad, but like they're lost somewhere. And then uh, the first YouTube channel we started was for the church in 2007. That was two years after the platform was founded. So I've been doing video for 20 years YouTube for 16 years. And, you know, I got expelled from Christian high school, prodigal living, like went kind of crazy. But once I was back in, you know, trying to follow Jesus, it was just like, you know, put me anywhere, God, like I'll serve anywhere. Like it's all for your glory. So I just kind of showed up and a camera was literally placed in my hand. Little did I know that that would be the tool that led to where we are today, a fig business, you know, about 20 W-2 employees, 10 contractors, all the different stuff that we're doing, just continuing continuing to steward that. And I really do believe that if you're faithful with what God puts in your hand, that he unlocks what's ultimately in your heart. And, you know, I think entrepreneurship, creativity, there were signs of that, but like it was just sort of following the cloud, man. I, I can't say it was super architected, it was just taking it one step at a time. Yeah, it's also interesting because back then you wouldn't have thought that that was going to be the thing that you were going to use to go big. And it kind of goes back again to even Joseph's story. You look at Joseph and he kind of had a vision for where he wanted to be in life. And I'm sure at this point you maybe had aspirations. Yeah. You grow up, you want to be a professional athlete or you want to have this like be an astronaut or like a firefighter or something. And yet you use the very thing you had the dream and then you went through what would have been considered like a low level thing. You're like doing video at church Yes. You're, you're maybe running the church's YouTube channel. And this is something I think people could pick up on is that you like, you crafted your skill doing it for other people even. Like how often do someone want to create their own business when they, and this is what I did. I went out and created my own. But what, what would have happened if I would have just sat underneath someone who had this baller business and learned the ops, the hiring, had the ability to even get paid to do the work. But when is that time to even transfer like, when did you know? And again, not that you can't help with that. I'm sure you still help with church's video stuff. Yeah. Hey, do this on social, do this on YouTube. But when did it go from, okay, this has equipped me. Now it's time to go from David tending sheep to Goliath and King. When did you make that transition? Yeah. You know, for me, I don't know if this is good theology, but it's definitely my convictions. Yeah. It's also kind of weird to be in ministry. I'm sure people will let us know it's good theology. Yeah. Give us yeah. feedback. It's weird to go from ministry, maybe others that have done this transition. It's kind of hard because ministry is a calling. I just started to volunteer at my church and I was, I stayed in that. So like I was at this church in Marysville from 2003 till 2010. Eventually some senior leaders had moral failure, stole some money. That church fell apart. That was the season two when my wife almost died. The big short, we lost two houses, investments and like house hacking that's before the term was popular and we had roommates and stuff. And so we were just devastated financially and going through all this stuff. That's what moved us to Vegas for another job at a church, 
now full-time salary as director of communications at the Church LV with Benny Perez. And that was from 2011 till mid or about 2015. And so I'm in ministry. Now I am doing social media communications, even Facebook ads, helping to build his personal brand, social media for him, for the church, learning leadership, a few team members underneath me. And I think there's maybe a combination of fear of stepping out, but also a conviction to stay planted, like to not step out too soon. And for all the character development and stuff I was going through. So all the way back to the theology thing, if you're in ministry, there is a thing called sent ones and wet ones. Like in in Acts, like some people are, they sent out, but some people just bail. And this gets into the whole like church splits. Like, could you be sent out from the pastors and elders with a blessing? Or did you just leave and no blessing? So without going down that rabbit hole, I think I think one of the biggest influences too was Saul and David. Saul tried to kill David 21 times. David dodged spears multiple times before he still was then been on the run, but would not retaliate. Yep. So my the re- I don't know if it's good theology is again, we did go through some challenging leadership stuff, maybe some toxic leadership stuff. But it was just always my conviction that like I'm gonna dodge spears. And that when I go into that next season, it's kind of when I'm sent out, when I'm released from ministry. That was my, that's where I came from. Yeah. So what happened was eventually I moved to Irvine to be a campus pastor for a year and a half. And at the end of that season, or after a year and a half, the lead pastor said, hey, how are you feeling about all this? And I said, well, I'm doing all right, but I kind of feel like Michael Jordan playing baseball. And he said, I get it. Because he knew I was into social media marketing. And now I'm doing like weddings, funerals. And local church stuff, which every, I look back, every ingredient of staying planted in sometimes uncomfortable seasons or staying planted in, because I think, yeah, it's like, you know, the deeper your roots grow, even if there's storms all around you, or even if there's stuff, you know, I was learning empathy, the pastoral heart. I was becoming a better leader. I was learning teamwork. I was learning culture. I was learning a lot. And then eventually when I said that to him and with Benny Perez sports analogies are kind of like prophecies. He was like, I I feel that one, you know, Michael Jordan playing baseball and my basketball was even entrepreneurship. Like I really had that call to, I think to business and that passion for business and then social media marketing video, YouTube. And he knew even when he hired me that I had a side YouTube thing going. So I had been doing that stuff on the side, but I felt like that was the moment. And I remember when he was like, yeah, I feel that I think. And I told him, I said, you tell me what to do. Full-time, part-time, or no time. So I was like, I trust you as my pastor and elders. And the reason I tread lightly is some people get into authoritarian, whatever, and you know. Good leaders. And like, and and should you really, is it okay to leave certain situations? And so to each his own. But all I know is that, and and by the way, there was some stuff where it was hard on our marriage because I had just because I had this like David mindset doesn't mean that my wife and I were in agreement about everything, you know? And so I've learned a lot in that season, but my, my heart was in the place of I'm waiting until I'm sent, you know? And when they were like, bro, you're kind of released. Essentially, I was like, let's go. So now then I went to freelance for a year and then my freelance clients fired me at the end of 2015. And so I just went all in as a solo creator. I definitely had some business shops and leadership shops leading up to that point. And now Think Media basically has been 2016 to 2023 in the current state that it is. And some might say that it's pretty extraordinary, the growth we've had and some of the things we've accomplished. And I would say, yeah, it hasn't just been, you know, the last seven years. It was the 10 years before that of the roots growing deep. And then that developmental season, that, you know, wilderness season, I think that's, you know, that that dark room is where the picture is developed where your character is getting forged. And I've realized business, leadership, entrepreneurship, it's freaking tough, man. It's really, it's really hard. So you need that, that character, at least for me, it's been helpful for all that formation time. Yeah. The reference of David was really good. Yeah. I want to touch on something with that, that I think would be cool. Is it with David, obviously first we got Samuel who goes out and like anoints him. And really that was cool because he was like, not the likely guy. Yeah. Right? He's like, oh, this should be the guy. Oh no, God looks at the heart. He doesn't just look on the external like man does. And you could take so much confidence in that. But David also sat there and let Saul be king knowing, 
oh, when God wants me to be king, I'll be king. And no one can take that away. But if I go into the season of kingship, I'm doing it without God. But how often do people play small? Like there has to be something that people are doing wrong where they just never step into that next season. Yeah. Somehow David was doing it so right. And you had this time where you got released. And so how do you even balance that now with the aggressiveness of building a business and getting on stages? And there's times where I'm like, you know, I've had people ask like, oh, is it just not my season yet? I'm like, I don't, I, I really don't mm. know. Right. Like, like D- David did it well, but when he became King, he was like, okay, now I'm released into this. It's time to aggressively grow. Yeah. What do you think for people out there? Like if they're in this season of feeling like I know I'm supposed to do that, but am I supposed to transition myself promoting? Yeah. You ever been through any of that? Sure. Sure. 100%. It's a very good conversation for Christian men who want to honor God. Yeah. I, I think, I think that the first question is you may know, you may know if you're honest with yourself, sometimes the heart is deceitful, but you know, if what you're in, where your ambition's at, but you may not know, but like, you know, secondly, you need voices in your life. I think you need, you need wise people you can process things with Yeah. who, who can speak into your life to say like, you're not ready or, or, and then vice versa, you're being lazy, you're being fearful. Like you're, you're, uh, tolerating abusive leadership. You're, yeah. you know, so you, there's your prayer time with the, with the Lord. And, and then are you willing to be honest with yourself? My motive is, uh, cause, cause ambition is good. Toxic ambition is bad. Yeah. Ambition is good. Selfish ambition is, is bad. I would encourage everybody to immediately buy three Kings by Gene Edwards, which is a phenomenal book about, Saul, David, and Absalom. And there's three personas that we can fall into as men. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be Saul. You don't want to be Absalom. You want to be David. Saul was insecure. Saul wanted to be approved by people. He feared people. He didn't even care about the approval of God. He just said, hey, Samuel, will you at least honor me in front of people? He built a monument to himself. He was afraid of powerful leaders around him. Uh, he tried to kill David, and he was also incredibly talented, gifted, and started well. Was very victorious and yeah. as a king, he even prophesied and all this stuff. He really was changed by the Spirit. So you don't want to be Saul. You don't want to be Absalom. If your way of building your platform is by tearing someone else's down, if your way of building your platform is by lying or being somewhat deceptive, trying to win people to yourself, you got to be careful, man, because Absalom was Absalom's style. And uh, he was not a man of honor. And he also built a monument to himself. David, Saul eventually, it says he eventually built an altar to the Lord. And that was like one time it was mentioned. Meanwhile, David lived with perpetual altars being built to the Lord. He was a man of prayer. So even that, that back to number one, if you're not a a man of, of prayer, fasting, worship as part of your lifestyle, if every once in a while yeah, you pray and seek God, like... That's, that's the, oh, the only way, the way to crucify pride is prayer. Like, uh, Jesus oftentimes withdrew to lonely places. And by the way, I, I'm not trying to be preachy at all. I read this literally this morning in, in uh, Mark and Luke. And I was like, if Jesus had to crucify pride in prayer and he had a way stronger prayer life than me, and he's the God man, I, I got to be on my face more. I think there's something powerful about literally getting on your knees and getting on the floor and prostrating yourself. This is old school, but like, because we got to be humble. So it is, and, and the, I would argue the propensity of people fall into either the Saul or Absalom category, which again, pride, insecurity, selfish ambition, um, not honoring God, not being honorable men. And then you have David. So Anyways, that's a really powerful yeah. book to, to get. So I think I think it's that, you know, your discernment. But we, we all need people, and then we need people in our life to call us out. And then I think I would probably default towards, it would seem that the theme of Scripture is not as um, speedy as today's generation. To, yeah. The theme of Scripture is not really a TikTok culture, kind of a, um, you know, viral culture. The theme of Scripture you see that got God, you know, inherit an inheritance gain too early in life will not be blessed in the end. It says in Proverbs, 
So I would say that was always on my heart. I actually, and there was, there's certainly a tension there, but I actually was avoiding, if you will, the spotlight. Some of it could have been fear and I could have, you know, maybe cowardice and so on and so forth. So it's about, it's a tension. There's a, there's a good book by Sam Chan, who's a leadership guy who talks about leadership tensions. And Craig Rochelle says this all the time. There's a lot of things that are a tension to be managed, not a problem to be solved. I don't think toxic ambition versus healthy ambition or self-promotion versus healthy promotion and marketing is actually a problem to be solved. It's a tension to be managed. It's yeah. not like, oh, I beat pride. Yeah. It's like that actually should be a lifelong uh, fight because pride can always be kind of crouching at the door, Yeah. you know? And so I think that for me, I was like, I slow growth. If I had to pick one slow growth or fast growth, 15, if I had to pick slow growth or 15 minutes of fame, I'm going to pick slow growth. If yeah. I had to pick slow growth and enough character development and I maybe get it way later in life then fast growth, but maybe it's a little sketchy and I may grow so fast that I blow my marriage up, cheat on my wife and, uh, you know, or hate myself or like have shallowness or in my soul because I don't like who I am when I look myself in the mirror. So I, I think hitting the brakes a little is what I would lean on. And I know that there's a whole other side of this that like, let's take territory and like declare victory and like the harvest is plentiful and like, like let's build the business and let's sow this year and reap a hundredfold in the same year. I, I, it's a tension to be managed. Yeah. And I think that also only time will tell. And so I've made a ton of mistakes and I don't, my character wasn't even fully ready. Even in the last seven, eight years, I think media, I've had some character challenges. Um, but nevertheless, I think the stability and fortitude and quality of our culture and stability and, and, and peace like a river and joy like a fountain that I have when I look at myself in the mirror and who I, is because of how we built and part of it. So I, I, I'm not the model, of course. You're not the model Jesus is. Yep. But these principles are pretty important. And all scripture yep. is God breathed. And so I think that the study of, I know I've talked long here, but I, I just read 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. I think so good. men listening to this, women listening to this should study Saul. King Saul um, should study David. Uh, King Saul is probably one of the greatest character studies, though specifically men should study. Because it is such a, if, if Timothy, Paul's writing to Timothy saying, hey man, all scripture is God breathed and it's useful for teaching. That should be a consistent character we look at as this opportunity. Scripture is like a mirror, it shines back to us. Like, are we, do we have any of these tendencies? You know, there was like a, there's like 23 steps in Saul's downfall. He starts trusting in the flesh, makes a sacrifice, not waiting for Samuel, which is super interesting. Um, and But then the different decisions he made. And so they were just like a, a lot of reminders to me, not looking to the right or the left, or like this guy really needs this. It's like, man, I really need this. And as Think Media continues to grow and as maybe the spotlight gets brighter on me, I'm like, I need to go lower. I need to stay humble. Uh, and I definitely don't want to be Saul or Absalom. I want to be David. Yeah, and even just as you were talking about it, I'm looking at the the core things that we can control that it's like no matter what. You had talked about good advisors around us. Yeah. They can speak into us. You may not be able to control when it's your time to be king. Yeah. But no matter what, there's never going to be a time that God's going to call you to not have good people around you. Now, is there a time that maybe you go out, you know, 40 days, one day here, a week trip? Of course. But is there ever going to be a time that he doesn't? Is there ever going to be a time where you're not supposed to be connected to him? Exactly. Really? I love the whole, uh, you had even said something on, maybe it was just, I didn't get to see the video, but I saw it was like, do this rather than going viral. Because no matter what, if you go viral, the answer afterwards is to be consistent. And so no matter what, the answer is being consistent. Just being consistent, yeah. That's the no matter what. The viral, we don't, you don't know, right? You're going to do your best, but yeah. but that doesn't solve it all. And it's like, I look at those things and, and those are key things that I take away from what you just said. What are the things that we can control to make sure that we have those right things in place Yeah. inside the business, the consistency uh, inside of even Jesus life, the prayer life being connected to him. Yeah. Are, are you reading Are like they say that the two ways to build your faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing with the word of God and that we don't live on bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of the father. And that could be a breathing word, right? Like, 
He can speak to us right now. We can have this revelation. My goodness. And you get that kind of like excitement when you read First Samuel. This is what guys should feel when they're reading the Bible. It's like when you read that, you're probably having this these weird thoughts. They're not like reading a book and you have this like, oh, that's a good aha. You have this breath, like a fresh bread that wells up and you're like, man, like I could live off this. Like I could chew on this for a while. Yeah. And I think that that's so big. And then the second was praying in the spirit was that other way to, to increase faith. But even saying that, those are the things that we can control. So it's like, if, if we're not doing that as men or as people and women, men, then, and we're just waiting for the season, Yeah. like we're not connected to God, hearing from him, walking, building our faith. And, and if not, then what direction are we going? And, and Saul's example you talked about was so good, bro. And I feel like this thing, it just came to me, generally speed of promotion is a bad thing because Saul got promoted quick. Mm -hmm. And David, not, we were talking before, I think we pressed record that like David was anointed. So he actually, that that's, and, and even Joseph too, even Joseph has a dream of clarity of his future that like, he's going to be shining. So yeah. He, he had, he had a future of, he's going to be assisting the King, me on the platform, me in the lights, me going viral, me with the following me with all the stuff. Yeah. He was also immature because the absolute wrong thing to do with a message like that, you either could have packaged a little bit better if you told your brothers and your family yep. or you could have kept it to yourself there's not, not nothing said that hey guys guess what all over you yeah like i'm uh i'm gonna be you're gonna bow to me like all this kind of stuff like he didn't really have tact he didn't have wisdom in that regard and nevertheless uh, god used it it triggers the series of events and so he went through this process developmental season where he's in potiphar's house but then gets falsely accused and ends up in prison and eventually he's in the palace that is a long process. Moses, you know, rightfully is zealous for the Israelite people, but expresses it wrong by murdering an Egyptian and then spends 40 years developing. You have Jesus where scripture and all God's wisdom is besides very insightful things of him asking questions, learning, being in the temple, uh, needing to be in his father's house. Like and growing in stature and favor with in wisdom with favor with God and man, so you have those indications, and then you have no record of his life until his ministry starts, and nevertheless doesn't start till he's thirty. And people listening to this of all different ages, I don't really think it's an age thing. It is though what we do have control of is our character development. Yeah. We certainly do. And people go out. I have you know twenty years of experience. No, you don't. You have one year of experience repeated twenty times. Because you didn't, you haven't been learning from the situation. If you haven't been praying and learning, you can go. They were forty years in the wilderness. They didn't need to be. Yeah, they were forty years in the wilderness, having to keep passing the same test. While Joshua and, were in Caleb were waiting for a generation to die so they could actually go into the promised land. So, on one hand, I do think we have so a little bit of control to speed up things or slow them down by our own choices and decisions. And I do know that God's grace is bigger than our frailty. But if I look at Moses and Jesus, if I look at David's process compared to Saul's process, if I look at Joseph's process, the theme again of scripture is that slow is better. Yep. But also when you look at even then the big picture is there is greater glory. I just read in Proverbs, it also talks about like, as you grow in wisdom, your fruitfulness multiplies year over year. God's, I think he, he, it's not that he just doesn't want to just get us to this place. He wants us to be able to stay there. And the repeated cycle of the Old Testament that we learn from is it's like people were, you know, in pain or suffering or slavery, cursing. And then they went into obedience and then it led to blessing and blessing led to comfort, pride, forgetting God. So then it went back into cursing. So then they had to repent. And so we get in these cycles yeah. and I, I it's, it's understandable because you start getting maybe money or accolades or fame or different stuff that can start coming your way. And as soon as a lot of people struggle, they say like, it's so hard to deal with, with, you know, problems or failure and, and I would argue that failure is a beginner's game in leadership. Yeah. That's just the perseverance and resilience to just not quit. Success is the hardest thing to deal with. Like, and that sounds, it could sound arrogant. It could sound weird. Like, but no, like dealing with success has killed more leaders than failure has. 
failure kind of keeps you gritty and resilient and humble. Success, pride comes before the fall. So as soon as success happens, you could fall into the three G's that guys fall into, girls, glory, or gold. They either get greedy, they go after the glory and get prideful, or they go for girls or guys, whatever. And ultimately, then that becomes your downfall because it went to your head. Yeah, you talked about just even the example of, let's say, money. Is it easier to have no money or to have money? And is it, people would say, I don't have any money, so I can't do what God's called me to do. Not knowing that you talked about the difference like, oh, unsuccessful, successful. What's harder, failure, being successful. When you have money, you now have to hear from God. Because every decision you make, this scared me when I was like 18, 19, 20. Because if I ever wanted to know where a Christian was, where they were going to live, what they were going to do, I just had to check where's the cheapest flights, where's the cheapest gas station. So were they actually hearing from God, being led by God, or were they being led by money? Because mm. every decision they were making was, can I afford it? Yeah. If they were going on missions, I just looked for the cheapest flight. Yeah. When are they leaving? Like, oh, just look at the flights, bro. Like they would just pick that. Whereas if you have this massive abundance, you're not looking at it that way. You're not saying, well, God, if you provide for this trip, I will go. If someone gives me money, then I'll go. If I get that job, if I land that deal and you get it and you go, oh, I'll make a decision to go. Now you can live anywhere, do anything, fly on any flight, whatever. And now you have to actually make decisions and steward, which is so much harder than having nothing. Yeah. Like really, the, and just the accountability of that. Because, you know, how, how are you going to tell, think that God's going to blame you if you don't have any resource? You're like, oh, I don't have any resource. I can't go there. Totally. So like, how could... God knows I did my best, yep. but what does that look like when you do have the abundance? So similar thing to like, is failure or success? It's like with failure, you have the problem of, man, I need to figure out how to make some money with 20 employees, eight figure business, you now have, oh, there's this lawsuit. Oh, we said something wrong here. Oh, this employee's quitting. And now there's like, we have this huge fire on this side and this huge production that we have to do. Those are huge. Mm, the weight of leadership, pain of leadership. And so, so you even touch on how your resiliency has grown. Because like what you go through now is massively bigger than your problems in 2016. Yeah. Yet, and your problems in 2016 probably seem pretty small. Most of them, I would assume. Yeah. How is that resiliency built up to be able to handle these bigger problems? Well, um, you know, I think probably one of the most powerful things I could share is actually just out of my weakness and brokenness. Um, you know, I'm super grateful today. Of course I'm on a journey, but two kids, marriage strong, love Jesus. I feel pretty confident when I look in the mirror about my character, but my character broke under the pressure of subscribers, growth, leadership pressure. And I started to return to stuff that God set me free from to try to, to try to cope with, with the stress of growing a business around 2018 and kind of 2019. And, and would you say that this phase would be like, you're in love with Jesus, going to church, you start building something, it's their success, their stress. And this is a time that you had this like struggle. I just want to make sure yeah. for the guys listening as well. Cause if they've, there's guys that maybe don't know Jesus, they're recommitting and then they're on yeah. this big high. There's other guys that have been walking with Jesus for a long time and they maybe have had this slump. Yeah. That you're kind of talking about. Yeah. And we were kind of in a dark night of the soul. I think there's multiple things happening. One is some chronic pain stuff from overwork. Some One is hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm -hmm. We we were making money. So money's coming in. Business is growing. But our dream was to have a family and with health challenges and different things and even probably the spiritual season. You know, we did not have kids and we are, we, we're married 17 years now. So we didn't have kids for 14 years and we and wanted and to and you tried the whole time yeah we we kind of we weren't really trying because of health challenge different seasons with sonia and let me get to the punchline. yeah i got to the place where i'm drinking one or two drinks a night multiple drinks on the weekend and i'm spending 400 bucks a week on weed wow. and smoking like vaping or edibles or whatever yeah and it kind of ramps up and the other piece so a little bit of chronic pain because i'm kind of like medical marijuana or whatever but knowing in my heart, when you really think about it too, that like, and by the way, I actually, I mean, not that it needs a disclaimer. I actually think that medical marijuana is the proper way to use medical marijuana. Like yeah. if it is medically, I think that you should always look for, you know, whatever better situation. But what I kind of learned was that the psychotropic elements, unless you really have glaucoma, 
a lot of people like, mm, you know, and, and you're going, you're just trying to get ripped, dude. You, you know, you're trying to get, and, and then, you know, probably really being in the wrong circle. And I was actually, I had good influences in my, my life, but just being listening to some people who, uh, well, let's go bold on the podcast, you know, kind of, there's some progressive Christianity out there, you know, towards some of these things. Um, and so with empathy, again, I was shrinking and I was trying to stay safe. And it was sort of, I heard actually even Alex Ramosi, right. Who, who does not profess as a believer, but he said during his p- a period of his business, he was drinking half a fifth of hard alcohol every night just to get his emotions back to zero yeah. because of the stress that built up and because of a lack of having more productive or better ways of dealing with stress or facing and manning up and becoming the leader God is calling us to be, you're shrinking back. So I was shrinking back, leaning on stuff that God set me free from, trying to stay safe. It's a false safety and just trying trying to survive. And I think it's also knowing that God's grace in that though is even in the wine press, he's calling me a mighty warrior. And what kind of kicked me out of that season, I, this was inspired by a question you asked of like resilience or whatever was, was I, I, I think I lost my vision and part of that was a vision bigger. As soon as Sony got pregnant through two prophetic words on two consecutive days at an event, that's not how she got pregnant. But <laughs> she got, the way she got pregnant, yeah. I don't need to describe it here, but what, you know, but I had somebody come up to me at Pedro Odeo's 100X event and say, hey, I know this is super weird and we're like not supposed to, you know, typically pro- like prophesy things like this. But like I, by this time next year, you will have a boy. Wow. And I was like, wow, it's, you know, you're gonna have to talk to my wife, but like, cool. I, I believe it. I receive it. The second day, someone goes out of a dream and I saw you and your wife with a boy, which is very specific and yeah. with a timeline on it. And so, you know, I also, another principle of it was what, you know, my friend Alejandro asked me, how did you break out of all that stuff? Another thing was getting in a spirit filled environment. I just remember when I went to, that conference, 100X in Vacaville, not Vacaville, Visalia, I think it was Vacaville, one of those places in California. They, I got into an environment with guys who didn't know me, prophet, you know, prophetic people. And of course, I'm also kind of just being hard on myself because I'm like, I'm just like, I, I'm trying to love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yeah. You know, we're, we're trying to like, Sonia and I, we're, we're in church. Um, I'm in my word, but like, you're also you're just carrying something that is not God's best, you know? Yeah. Um, and I just remember experiencing the love of God and, and people calling out who I was. It was like guys saying mighty warrior and some crazy, very specific things for people who didn't know me. But that event, those prophetic words, Sonia getting pregnant, me catching a vision of being a father. And I want to tread lightly because I know maybe somebody are like, we've been trying and like, that's been a dead end for us and so on and so forth. But like, I do think in this case, the enemy's plan would be to steal, kill, and destroy and keep us from our destiny. Yeah. And God's getting the prophetic word to us, us getting out of that. Hope deferred, make the heart sick. My heart was sick and I was numbing the pain. And I started to catch a vision. Then it was like, who do I want to be as a father? And then it was like, I think to answer your question with the long story, it was like, you know, where did that resilience grow? I think that I was ultimately being selfish. I Where survival became selfish for me. And I, as I began to capture a vision for who do I want to be for my son? Who does my team need to be? Who do I need to be for Think Media? Who do I need to be for the people we're called to serve? Beyond, you know, our business is kind of at a cool place and like I can kind of just, you know, numb the pain and just, just try to disconnect. And so, yeah, man, I, I share that just because guys could be at any kind of, you know, situation in their life. But God is good. And I had an awesome guy, Keith Ferrante, he's kind of a prophet. As I was sharing all that with him and kind of being hard on myself, I was like, yeah, you know, this stuff is it's not good. It's not a good way of dealing with stress. Who do I think I am? Like method man? Like what am I smoking blunts, you know, sipping? Like what is happening here? But he was like, you know, I think, bro, you really need to understand like how much God was with you in that season and how much he understood just the pain you were going through and just that you clearly didn't know how to process your pain properly. And I think that one of our missions now is to, we want to help people have success without losing their soul. We were helping people on YouTube, helping them with video marketing, 
But we see so many people burning out in the creator economy and content creators and these front-facing entrepreneurs. Just the pressure of having eyeball. You have the pressure of growth, fame, negative comments. You have guys like PewDiePie talking about alcoholism and just uh, like you, you see it happen with a lot of celebrities. They get in. We well, start realizing you see it with Justin Bieber, young guy, gets famous, gets all this attention on him. And then he kind of goes crazy. People are judgmental. You're like, bro, stewarding the pressure of the public and expectations, whether they're there or not, like all of that. Sometimes it's just like, man, I'm just trying to like lock the door and, you know, light a blunt. And, <laughs> and yeah. you know, and so obviously, though, growing past that, um, as I ca- caught a vision for family, my son, our team. I also just realized how important it is to aggressively work on my character. I need to work harder on myself than I do on my job. I need to work harder on myself than I do on my business. And I need to take my character more serious than I do clout. My character is so important. And so being in the, you know, Christian mastermind we're in, getting around iron sharpens iron, not some like shallow, allow me to kindly describe, you know, surface cultural Christians that like aren't really living it. You need to be around some guys that are serious, spirit filled, that'll call you on your BS, that'll call you to a higher level, that will speak the word of God and say, dude, you're a mighty warrior. You're better than this. Yeah. Don't shrink to that level of living. Don't try to stay safe. You're like you got to step up and step out. You got to man up. And, and really be who God has called you to be and can speak that truth into you and potentially speak like, kind of like knock it off. You know, I, I listened to Killing Kryptonite by John Brevere is a really good thing. I was also, when you're, when there's compromise in the Christian's life, there, you're, are you still saved? Probably. Are you still, you know, if you still love Jesus, you're still living it out, but you lack, you unplug from the power. Yeah. Sin and compromise is the kryptonite. And when Superman's around kryptonite, he's not, he doesn't have the power anymore. And so, yeah, I mean, that it's been a journey. And so focusing on, I want my character. So a lot of times your charisma can take you further than your you know character can keep you. And so when you've got all that momentum and thick media or some different talents or skills that have developed and just the fortunate timing of when we started YouTube and all that stuff, it did get bigger than my character at first and mm-hmm. lesson that I learned. And if I would have stayed on that path, who knows where we would be, but you know, the uh, grateful for, you know, progressive victory and even more thoughtful that like these days, in fact, where I think media is at this days, the other day I thought like one of my m- most important jobs as the founder CEO is to just not mess it up. I mean, I think that's like a big point. Yeah. You start looking at businesses and or churches with more moral failures of like lead people and stuff like not to be blunt, but like I, one of my most important jobs is to like not end up in a hotel room with a gay prostitute, like doing crack for real. Yeah. That's what happened to Ted Haggard. This is a known yeah. story. Yep. You know what I mean? Like one of my most important things is to not be taking fifths of tequila to some girl I met in the park like Carl Lentz. These are true stories, right? You know, and I'm not got to be funny about like whatever, and, but it's the real stuff. Yeah, the reality. It's the real stuff that's happening. Because they have like, a lot to lose. Like that's, people think about, did they do something wrong? Maybe you're smoking $400 a week. And yeah. And so when your Christian friends come over, you probably don't light up the bong. And Correct. That. So you kind of like do these things to make sure that it doesn't really get out. Yeah. If you're living so, a double life, that's a good signal. You got some red flags. If these guys are that big, you would think that the Carl Lentz, I didn't even know that's how that whole thing went down, but you would think that they're probably trying not to make it that public either. And like, of course let that stuff come out. And the fact that they get caught doing these things is like so intense, bro. Dude, this guy, Jeremy Foster, and I'm not trying to call people out. These are public stories. Yeah. Cheats on his wife with, and he has a church that's crushing, crushing with a massage therapist. And then, uh, I don't like they get divorced, marries the massage therapist. His daughter comes out and recently just shared a bunch of stuff. I asked my dad, like, repent and reconcile. Like, I pled with him. Like, this is what you don't know about the story. And I understand we need the empathetic side and we yeah. need the reconciliatory side. But there's some, there's just a the part of the conversation where people aren't willing to go there and talk about like, dude, what the hell? Yeah. Like, no, like. 
honor God, do right by your wife, make the right decision. You know, back in the charismania, uh, you have Todd Bentley, right? And, you know, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, but is somebody just going to step up and talk about like right and wrong? And okay, you like kind of meet an intern and, and whatever. And again, he goes to reconciliation. All I'm just trying to say is talking to the man listening to this yeah. to be like, honor God, you know, and get, have people in your life too, that are not like, Oh, it's cool, dude. You know, maybe just chill for uh, a year or whatever. Like, and I, and, and I know scripture is about rec- reconciliation and all this stuff, but we've kind of grown soft, I yeah. think in some cases and, and, it's, it's a greater extended sickness of even kind of the American church, which is can tolerate compromise. And by the way, with the measure that you use, it'll be measured back to you. Let me speak to it. I should not have been getting drunk. I should not have been getting high. Yeah. And that, you know, that level of comp people are trying to say, oh, it's, it's a seed, bro. No, like you should not get high. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it's like, but it's the complacency in the vision. These guys have big successful churches. It starts off. I guarantee they were running with God. Totally. God vision. And then you get this weird complacency sometimes in your vision where you had talked about losing it and how big purpose and vision is in the Bible, but also for men. They say that women really do well with people like giving them unconditional love. Yeah. Saying like, I love you no matter who you are. But that doesn't work the same for men. And there was a story that another YouTuber had talked about that was basically... The like 1940s, at one point there was guys in like an insane asylum, totally unresponsive, mentally ill, and they needed people to drive fire trucks and ambulances. And when they heard that, it gave them purpose. Mm. And they literally woke up Sorry. after years of being unresponsive. Oh, we love you no matter who you are, what you do. But as a man, you need that vision and you need purpose. And, and also, I think it's healthy to know where that's coming from. Yeah. We see many businessmen out there that have this vision and purpose to build something Yeah. That, for what, like what are they doing? But man, like what they got lost in the vision, like whatever happened to that Carl Lentz guy? Cause he was famous, right? Like he was like, this is Hillsong church. Well, right? now he's doing a special, uh, he's going to do a special like Hillsong exposed was a thing, but then they got him and his wife. They're going to do a special on exposing Hillsong. He just joined the staff of Transformation Church with Mike Todd. Right. That's public knowledge. He's going to be like a strategist, maybe like a teacher over there. And listen, like, uh, like they're, they stay together, which is powerful. Yep. She stay with them. Um, somebody, my friend Ruslan, uh, a guy I think goes to Transformation, was on his show and was like, it's, it's cool to see their family seems to be flourishing and they're like, they have good. So I'm all yep. like, again... God is the God of, of the future. But I do think that sometimes, I mean, I just know when Zacchaeus, you know, got really saved and really encountered Jesus, yep. his, his response was just like, man, if I've cheated anyone, I'm going to make it right. Yes. So I know that there's some things like you may not be able to go to make it right. Maybe the marriage has already ended. Maybe the things already happened. Maybe the door is already closed. But to me, just following Jesus is to like, have the humility that if there's something wrong, you yeah. just will make it right. Yeah. You know, as opposed to just sweeping it under grace. And, and a transformation, right? There has to be like some change. Some of these guys you brought up, they continue to go down the same sure. path. Because let's take Carl Faith or, or just facing, you look at Liver King, and then we look at some other influencers out there that haven't done a good job. They a lot of times I see like persona. You kind of get into a persona. Yeah. It's not really who you are. It's hard to sustain. That comes with pressure because then you always have to like be on. Yeah. Do this, you know, act, this this monkey dance act. And you have someone like Liver King who literally got exposed for being on steroids. Totally. After completely lying. And I've had people say, oh, I haven't followed his, his stuff since. But he's continued to grow because he just instantly was like, I'm going to go on a PR tour of like taking full responsibility. Yeah. And it's not perfect, right? He's not a robot. So it's like jacked up but he's literally still on social still continually selling stuff probably has either equaled or grown his business yeah I, I would assume but you have other guys that they get exposed and then they disappear off the face of the planet yeah and i'm like would it have really been that bad if they were like yeah guys like i really messed up and so like 
I'm going to prove myself and prove trust again through this process, and I'm going to transform and change. Dude, it. that's what the Bible would teach, man. Like, and yeah, liver it is where people blood work every week. Yeah, they, right? people sweep it. Yeah, I wish that, that that there's something in the church they could learn from Liver King because people again they kind of like and to sweep again, it. Under he may the... still be on steroids, so like I have no clue. But right. but time will sure. tell. But it seems like a healthy process. And so there's a really good book called Lead by Paul Tripp and. It is. It's hard and heavy, though. But this is a this is a dynamic issue. It's a hard and heavy. It's really about character, and it also speaks to, you know, the empathetic side too. Is the system that sometimes lead pastors find themselves in, and the system it can also be. It's one that promotes secrecy, because if your livelihood is dependent upon also your character and your conduct. You, there's so many intertwined things. Do you even have a process? And then, and, and I think as business leaders, this is stuff I think about all the time. So I start thinking about, okay, uh, Billy Graham rule. That's why I live my life. You know, Billy Graham rules in terms of like, even just the other day I was thinking about, we have uh, female staff and I was like, after we got back with this thing, I was like, oh, they have both their cars here. They could drive me home. It's five minutes up the road. I'm like, I'm getting an Uber instead. I'm not going to drive solo with with yeah. the, with these uh, women and just these different, you know, my wife knowing where I'm at, I am or whatever. That's what's wild. Carl was weekly one to two times a week for hours at a time going over to this girl's house with a backpack and a bottle of tequila in it and like bing bong, bing bong. And like, dude, nobody knows where he is. I mean... There's there's a structural problem. Yeah. And to the humility of a man would say, I'm going to put infrastructure in my life. But this side of heaven, we're going to deal with lust. Yeah. The whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think if someone goes, yeah, you know, God set me free from lust. I'm going to call Have it out right now on the podcast. Yeah. 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 Maybe Bro, you should go to the doctor. You're lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe for like a season, but like yeah. rather than, and that's like the humility would say, I'm going to get the right structure in my life. People who can call me out. People yeah. can, I'm going to get around. And, and, uh, I want, I want smart. My pastor here in Vegas, Javen of city light church. He talks about too. He's like, God, one of his prayers is, like, God, when I'm at my weakest, don't let me allow me to be in this situation. And then also protect me from being in this situation. Yeah, yeah. Because there's maybe times when, like, you're really weak, but thank God you've set up parameters. So you're right. like, cool, like, I just have this stuff in my life. Of course, because it's like when you're really strong. And I actually remember one of my young mentors as well said, like, if you're dabbling with something, like for alcohol, alcohol is not a sin, right? People can drink responsibly. That's the whole thing. But they say, if you deal with something like that, your question isn't how you handle that substance in the best times. The question is, how do you handle it in your weak times? Yeah. Harry Noble, a lot of stuff that he, there was a massive fall. He was huge in the church. And in one of the things he's like, I just started leaning on alcohol way too much, way too heavy. I think these are just good warning signs for us where especially in entrepreneurship. It's one thing where you are now, but as the pressure mounts, maybe some drama starts happening with your staff, you're trying to process these different things. Like, what are the things in your life? Again, like, what's exciting? Like, I'm trying to eat healthy. You know, I, I learn health tips from you all the time and, and uh, I'm trying to work on that ADB plan, that anti-dad bod plan. Uh, I'm approaching 40 this year. And one of the things I've learned about eating healthy is just what you have in your house in your refrigerator. Yeah. If it's there, then next thing you know, I love these chocolate covered gummy bears, man. I get them from yeah. the Smiths up the street. If they make it in the shopping cart, they make it to the house. If they make it to the house, they make it into my mouth. If yep. they make it in my mouth, they make it into my, you know, sugar and chocolate. Yeah. Last time I was there, I, I passed on the chocolate covered gummy bears. Sure enough, I didn't eat any that week. Because yep. I didn't purchase them and they yep. didn't make it to the house. So even just thinking about from the simplest things to the biggest things, yep. I think there's something in wisdom. And this is a long rabbit trail off of just my number one job. I really think about this is like, don't cheat on my wife. Yeah. Like don't uh, spend $400 a week in weed and, you know, don't uh, like watch, you know, my character Vital signs, yeah. the check engine light. 
you know, ask questions. I asked a team member the other day, what is one thing you tell me if you knew I couldn't get offended? Ask for feedback from a humble place, humble myself before my team and my executive team. Yeah. Ask my wife for feedback. No ego amigo. And, and, and to that end, of course, I still want to grow and work on my skills, but this is just from my vantage point. I think media is doing pretty good. It's a stewardship. Yep. And there's too many. And that was, the, I guess, the point of listing out these scenarios. And you can list out the same in business. Even I, is the church worse? It's so bad. Why is this happening in the church? I think it's just humanity, man. Yep. Vince McMahon, the, the WWE is doing this big merger, right? It's all coming under like this bigger parent company. And this whole thing is happening. But it's controversial because he stepped down as CEO. And there's all these payouts. Like the $14 million in payouts for buyout of women or something that he's been accused of or, or yeah. whatever. So it's like, you know, and I, and unfortunately at the higher levels of leadership, you know, higher levels of church or the, you know, right now this week, uh, today, uh, Trump's arrested yeah. for whatever, which is its own ridiculous thing. And, you know, if it was the Bill Clinton era, like, he had a he had the bimbo squad. Hillary ran the bimbo squad, which would follow up of all the different people he would sleep with to pay them off, and it'd be like 100k NDA, etc. Which is just the point of saying how ridiculous what's happening yeah, today, yeah. and we are way off right now. But the punchline yeah. is is just thinking like, man, if you can guard your, it's like I actually really believe this. If you will work on your character, God will take care of your calling. And if you also won't work on your character, even if you're called, the gifts and call of God are irrevocable. It's just like, man, what's what's the real legacy we're leaving? And it's there's too many warning signs in scripture of, of people who started well, but did not finish strong. One of my favorite people is John Brevere. And he spoke at our event. It was a secular event, you know, video marketing event, but it was really cool. He gave an altar call and, wow. and uh at dinner, though, we were talking about his book. Now it's all about the fear of the Lord, and he said yeah. that was the that's the secret. I was like, yeah. John, like, why why are so many? One of the reasons I love John and Lisa so much is I want to say he's in his sixties. All his kids love Jesus. They're either in the ministry or business. There has no moral failures that I know on his record. Which I start one of the things I'm celebrating the most, and not just famous authors or famous speakers. I think the person who's underappreciated is the local pastor or the local business owner who has just been steady and strong. Yeah. I think that probably one of the reasons we're also so messed up is we're only looking at like these, the, the highlight reel and the social media lens of like, if you don't do a million dollar launch or you don't do this, then like, it doesn't even matter. I think that sometimes maybe even the intensity of all that, like th- there is something about the person who's steady Strong family, strong kids, strong marriage, strong business, serving in the local church. All that to say is that I was like, John, and he was like, I, I go, that's probably the thing I want to learn from you the most. And is like, I just want to finish strong. And I'm about to turn 40. I am just getting started. And I know who I am. And I don't mean it in a good way. I'm like, man, I want to work on my character because... There's a lot of years left. And as I look ahead too, with excitement, no fear, fear go, Holy Spirit come. But as I look ahead, I'm like, man, if the, plat- the platform's going to get bigger, the opportunities get bigger. Like, you know, like Jabin would pray, don't let opportunity and weakness meet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've never been offered the kingdoms of the world, you know, taken up to a high place. I've never, you know, we like that the pride comes before the fall. We think we can't follow. It's probably the beginning of the end. So anyways, that's quite the journey. I was like, I'm going, I'm, I was like along for it. It felt like I went, we started in the ocean, we were swimming and I was like, man, I have so many good things on. This is great. And then we got out on the bike and we did a bike ride. And, it was an Ironman. And then, and then we jumped off the bike and we ran home and I was like, wow. I was like, there's a Dude, lot. I want to do an Ironman someday. It's one really? of my goals. You actually do? I do want to do an Ironman. Right. You, you heard it here. So that's, yeah. this is going to be the place. I, I, I'm i scared to say that I would like to because of then I'd have to go through the mental process of 
if I don't sign up for it, what does that mean? Am I afraid of swimming? Am I afraid of this? Am I afraid of that? Then what does that mean? Now I got to go attack it. Yeah. So for right now, I'm like, oh, I'll stay off the whole Iron Man thing. But now you got me. Yeah. Like, no. This happened with 75 hard. I did 75 hard. Yeah. I had done cold plunges, all this stuff. But phase one, I think it's called, you got to take a five minute cold shower every day. This is after 75 hard. Yeah. On top of the 75 hard thing. And I can't tell you how much that ate at me. And I think this is a really good thing. Because growing up, I was a kid who would work hard when the coaches were looking. But as soon as they looked away, I'd fake it. Mm. Like it was all, and everyone would have thought I was worked really hard because that's all they saw. At least I thought they didn't, they noticed that. So I get to this and I'm running an event, a mastermind. I'm starting phase one. I do two workouts, read 10 pages, no alcohol, no cheat meals. This is like my 80th day in a row, but I'm moving into the next phase. Turn on the cold shower and I look at it. And I'm like, there's just no way. Like I got all these pressures throughout the day. Like there's something with it. Next day, did it all two workouts, did the whole thing, looked at the shower. I can't do it. And I knew in my life I can never move forward. Check the box that I completed that day one until I did it. Mm -hmm. And what's so crazy about that, and this may be valuable for everyone in a smaller situation. I did all of 75 hard and I got more mental breakthrough through my first cold shower, the first five minutes. And when I completed it, I just knew that that would never have a grip on my life ever again. So good. And I did 143 days of no warm water after that. I thought I may, I may never even use warm water. So you have Ironman set you up for that. It, and potentially. Yeah. But you would think that all of that grueling 75 days straight. Yeah. That that would have been transformational. And it so much was. Yeah. But it was. But the there was shower. something I knew I could do the workouts if I just did it. But I knew I can, I, for my rest of my life, I'd have to look at myself and be like, you can never check this box and say you did phase one to yourself unless you do a five minute cold shower. After that, so I became addicted. I thought, I told Amanda, I was like, hey, when we build our new house, I'm thinking about not putting a water here, like as a joke. Yeah. Cause I was 143 days, no warm water for anything. Yeah. No like cold to warm, any of that. Yeah. And these things, like whatever that is for other people, if it's the Iron Man for you, it's like, man, so. It's not even the Iron Man that's valuable. It's the fact that you're looking at it in the face and you have this like little desire. Yeah. And if it's big enough like that, it's like, I've got to do it. Yeah. My stepbrother did it and trained for it and then dislocated his shoulder during it, but still finished. So it was even this thing. He probably like, looks back he, and is so happy. He yeah. And he, he, he barely, I think it's 16 hours is your limit. And he did like 15 something. And he was like, limping at the end like in pain oh, wow. but it was just the idea of finishing and and then there's like that netflix uh show which is like iron cowboy you ever hear about that guy yeah we did like 50 iron man every 50, single day or something days. in a different city or something you know i, I always i always, i think it's actually there's different levels it's yeah. good to look at goggins or iron cowboy and then my friend gabe the other day with zero training this past saturday just ran a marathon up in mount charleston here in vegas did you train no uh, have you done any any physical strength training? No, I've actually been off. You've been running lately? Not even really. But he's like, I'm reading Goggins' second book. And I was like, I just got to register. And he, he went and he finished. And so, you know, I ran 2.6 miles yesterday and 2.2 the day before. And I'm like, freaking hey, dude, Gabe just How do, I, how do I even make it? You, start, yeah. you get to the end of the block. If you haven't been running and you don't have that goal, that reason in mind, you get to the end of the block and you're like, I can't, I can't even make it around the block. Yeah. Like I've been there so many times, dude. So, so I just, I'm like Finn, Iron Man crazy, but like, I'm, I'm not trying to like be a record scoring, whatever. I just think setting something like that and just doing it, just yeah. finishing as opposed to being Nick Bear or whatever, you know, who that is, uh, have you heard of that yeah. guy? No. Uh, B1 supplements. I don't know if that's his name, but like he got really big yeah. and then got really into running and like stays pretty big. Cause it's kind of maybe hard to stay big. Is he it? near me? Is he in Austin? I think he's in Austin. I think I do know who you're talking about. Yeah. It's like he really is in a running, maybe ultras now, but like yeah. fast too, though. Like he'll do stuff pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So amazing, dude. I, I've loved your whole process. Like there's so many things that I, I even, even with just the entrepreneurship side, that it's one thing if you're just growing Think Media, Think Media podcasts, plugs. Those are plugs, by the way. Um, make sure to check those out. But even if you're just to grow that and you have a perfect life, Hmm. that's still a difficult thing, but you're talking about times with your wife, health struggles for her, health struggles for you. Uh, I know that I can't 
get you to go that deep on it and like we have to do a whole other show but how did you encounter a great struggle and can and continue to respond and how did you respond in those seasons because there's when i didn't have a kid and i'm building a business it was very easy yeah. sometimes when my my son's sick or my wife's going through something or a family member is going through something and those are difficult times and it's tough to show up mm. and i feel that that's not touched on enough like everyone would look at us and be like man like, so great they get to just work really really hard yeah. they don't really know like that you have to respond and work in the midst of sometimes really difficult situations do you have a key one that you can think of and, and how you work through it i mean maybe it, it would go back uh, I, to be honest i want to give as we should on a macro but i want to give glory to god and gratitude for perhaps my genetics because i think it's also just an attribute of leadership to be stoic uh to have control of your emotions so you've been a very steady person uh, yeah and i think and so i think one of the most discouraging things somebody can do is to project what comes natural to them as if somebody else should like and this is going to be the key now i am a full big believer in john maxwell law of the lid yeah and i believe the law of the lid probably applies to every area so that is the idea that we have natural leadership ability and so you might be a level four leader naturally and we all can grow. So I think it's, we, we should have a growth mindset, believe that all things are possible and believe that our current circumstances or competencies or skills, that those have to be static. However, a level four leader probably can never become a level 10 leader. So this is just self-awareness as well. A level four leader could probably for sure become a, a five, six, seven, maybe eight through depending how bad you want it, how much you want to grow. And that's probably true for anything. It's like a level two basketball player is not going to play in the NBA. So thinking through some of those things. So I think that there is a level, people even ask, are leaders built or are they born? Yeah. In my opinion, it is both. Of course. And everyone should be aspiring to leadership and everyone can grow it in leadership, but at different levels. So I think that stoicism, and I don't mean like the philosophical practice, but I yeah. just mean being sto stoic and being steady. Um, I actually, there's a really good book called Attributes written by a Navy SEAL. And it taught resilience is how quickly you come back to baseline. So uh, I never understood resilience this way. So baseline would just be, resilience would be you freaking crush it, record sales month. And yes, you should celebrate, but some people are like, Dude, let's go crazy then. I'm going to finally buy that car, buy the bottle. Let's like hit the yes party, whatever. Resilience is like, cool, let's celebrate. Back to work. Or punched in the face, lawsuit, negative P&L, crushed, whatever. Cool, back to work. And so resilience would be whether you just got, I mean, I think we can all relate. There's something about getting a, 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 a fight with your spouse yeah. 10 minutes before the 9 a.m. meeting, right? Like that's going to be the time. <laughs> like, yeah. And so whether it's, uh, or, or you're about to speak on stage and you get a text message, you're about to do an event yep. and you're you, you, all of a sudden the night before you start getting sick, like you, you're, you're all congested. Like, and you read into it more too. Yeah. You have something coming up. So you're like, of course this would happen to me right now. Stress is building up yep. fight. I mean, I remember my wife and I having like, just a crazy fight the night in between a two day event and me and I, we used to get in a fight all the time too even in ministry like we were in ministry together and stuff yeah. so i think and there's something like maybe that's when the enemy attacks there's also wisdom as a husband to be thoughtful about that all different things here's the punchline dude it doesn't once once it's time for you to speak or you to show up and get results or you to show up and talk to a client or you to show up like you got to be able to to turn it on you got to be able to compartmentalize a little bit yep. and realize like it's just time to go. I think that's partly maturity, partly leadership, partly a level of leadership. And I don't know if what I'm saying is adding any value because you're asking, is, bro. you know, what have I done? I think it's, it's tried to learn about, to understand that, tried to grow in those things like resilience. Yeah. Thank you again for listening to this episode of God's business. If this was valuable to you, you're going to want to head over to the YouTube channel Click subscribe, ring that bell. Also leave a comment so that we know that you're listening. Also, we're on every single podcast platform as well. So no matter which one you're listening on, you can cross-reference. Head over to your favorite podcast platform, 
subscribe, leave a rate, leave a review. It would mean the world to us. If you want to see the rest of this episode, because this was just part of it, uh, we had some crazy technical issues and the fact that we even saved this part is insane. But we go back and record it. So if you want to hear the rest of it, you could see that it got cut off. We can recreate the rest of it and create a part two for you, only if it's demanded by you. So let us know down in the comments or on social. Thank you for listening to God's Business, supporting what God's doing on the earth through business people and through you.